So let me go to probabilistic error cancellation. This is apparently a completely different technique, but as we are going to show, it can be applied in a very similar way as zero noise extrapolation. So probabilistic error cancellation uh, is, a, is a technique to estimate uh, ideal expectation values. So I assume that we want to measure the expectation value of the observable A after an ideal circuit U applied to an, an initial state rho zero. And the circuit is composed of T local gates, G1, G2, GT. So unfortunately, we cannot apply these ideal gates because we have a noisy hardware. And so the first uh, key idea of uh, probabilistic error cancellation is to expand an ideal gate as a linear combination of noisy gates. So uh, mathematically, you can think of G as a super operator acting on the space of density matrices. So basically, it's a matrix, a big matrix, not actually not so big, it's a gate. And it's unitary, but you have in practice, you can implement non-unitary channels, which are again super operators acting on the space of density matrices. And if you take a linear combination of this, you can still recover the ideal uh, operation. And the coefficients can be shown that they are uh, real and normalized. And unfortunately, they are not positive. And so they, are, they cannot be considered as a probability distribution and they are actually called a quasi-probability. So it's a quasi-probability distribution. And actually the, the negativity of these coefficients uh, determine, uh, determines uh, uh, how strong is the sampling overhead due to the application of error mitigation. If they were all positive, you could do this without any overhead at all. So if we now replace this expansion into the circuits, exactly, if we take the gates and we put in the expansion of the circuits, we get the ideal expectation value expressed as a linear combination of noisy expectation values, where it is important to notice that, sorry, these uh, expectation values can be measured. So they are uh, expectation values evaluated with circuits that are composed only of implementable noisy operations. Uh, so this looks too good to be true. So we are basically canceling any type of noise. Unfortunately, the number of terms in this sum is exponentially large. And so the, the second main idea of PEC is that instead of measuring all of them, you can sample some of them in order to approximate this expression here. You can use Monte Carlo uh, sampling. And so in practice, you, you need to measure a finite subset of the noisy observables. This is very quick overview of PEC in theory. And let's see how it can be implemented in MITIC. So even if the theory looks so different with respect to zero noise extrapolation, in practice, from the point of view of the workflow, it's exactly the same process. You get a quantum circuit from the user. You need to generate, in this case, probabilistically, a large set of uh, random circuits, actually not random, but related to the input. And uh, you execute these circuits on the back end, you get the result, and you use this linear combination that I've shown you before, so the quasi-probability distribution, to recover and the error mitigated expectation value. So how the, what is the key ingredient to apply this in MITIC? The key ingredient is the operation representation class, which is an object that is the, uh, designed exactly to represent this type of linear combination of noisy gates that produces an ideal gate. So for example, if we define the ideal operation Hadamard applied to qubit zero with this Qiskit circuit, and if we assume that we have depolarizing noise on the, on the device, 
you can easily obtain uh, uh, one of these operational representations that can be printed uh, and basically can you get exactly this type of expression, which you have the Hadamard gate expressed as a linear combination of noisy gates. So this is the way in which you can apply PC. After you have these representations, you call the function execute with PC, and you get directly the result that you want. And together with this, you also get all the additional data of the process that you can analyze, and, and if you want, you can also plot and so on. So this was an overview of PEC, and I think I will skip the, the key there for was, uh, There was a yes. question from Anna about how do you compute the ATAs, the ADA coefficients in the noisy observables here? Yeah, that's, that's a good point, because in principle, even these ATAs are exponentially many of them. So you cannot measure you cannot compute all of them, but what you can do is that you can sample, let's see here, what you can, ah, so maybe the, the question is, how can I build this representation, not how can I compute the ethics, right? So uh, these representations can be built if we know the full tomography of the noisy operations or at least if we have a guess for the noise model of the system. And because depending on this, you, you get uh, different representations. And in MITIC, we also have a function that given the super operators of the noise oper oper operations, produces this quasi distribution that gives you the ideal gain. It's a numerical optimization problem. Could you tell me, tell us a little more about how, if, if you're familiar with that particular function, if, how or what that does or how it works? Yeah, so it's uh, <clears throat> basically you you minimize. So it's an it's a minimization problem. You have these matrices, which is given as a data input. They are super operators. They are matrices, and also this one is a matrix. And these ETAs are your optimization variables. And then you, you can ask among all the possible variables that you can put here that gives you G, what is the optimal representation? So what is the optimal choice of this variable that uh, minimize the negativity of this uh, distribution? So basically that minimizes the one norm of this set of coefficients such that you still need to impose this condition. And in practice, it's a, a semi-definite uh, optimization problem. See. So you need to give it uh, the, the, the noisy gate GI on the one side, which has both the noise and like a C not gate, let's say. And then you also need to give it a basis of uh, gates that you can apply or what what exactly exactly is yes mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, a basis of gates that you can apply usually you have a guess for them sorry oh. yeah so i mean i guess one native basis would be the set of all single qubit product polys right so that would be like four to the power of two n number of uh no yeah but you don't have to <laughs> to try all this yes if you if you have uh usually you have uh, a single qubit or a two qubit gate. So yeah, it's uh, the usual trick is to apply the same gate followed by Pauli gates and all the combination of, of Pauli gates. 